He is the father fighting for justice after his daughter was bashed to death. But today John Heron found out the monster who killed his daughter can't be found guilty, won't be convicted or even spend another night in prison for what he did to Courtney. John is speaking for the first time. It's hard to explain and comprehend a father that loses his only daughter and his first child. It's a devastating impact on, on a family, uh, particularly her siblings, who <laughs> who really struggled to get through this. John Heron has a huge hole in his heart. We couldn't have an open casket funeral and her head had to be reconstructed. Such was the brutal nature of the crime. John says he spent every waking moment protecting his little princess. Sadly we fell away a little bit at, at the end which is something that I have to live with. But on one fateful night in May last year there was nothing he could do to save daughter Courtney from a monster. Good evening. The man accused of beating Courtney Heron to death has smiled as he faced court for the first time charged with murder. The 25-year-old was bludgeoned to death and hidden among logs in Melbourne's Royal Park. The beating so violent, her family wasn't allowed to view her body. As much as I could do was to touch her foot over a sheet. The warning signs were there. Henry Hammond wanted to kill. And according to one magistrate, he shouldn't have been on the streets when he took Courtney's life. In fact, it's in black and white. We obtained these documents a year ago and their contents have remained a tightly guarded secret. That is, until right now. My daughter would be alive now if he wasn't released. John's a lawyer who's worked for the Department of Justice, but this is a case he says he can't comprehend. I put bamboo through my nose. Henry Hammond is highly disturbed. A former private schoolboy who now calls himself Odin, the god of death. This is him during a chance encounter on the footy show in 2018. I'm a very powerful shaman. A, a oh, very, right. very, very, what, what is it? A shaman. A shaman. Courtney wasn't the first woman Hammond tried to control. In late 2018, he pulled a knife on his ex-girlfriend while trying to strangle her. Hammond told her, I'm going to kill you, and later told police he wanted to choke his ex to shut her up. There will always be violent men that will do these things. But when you operate... As, as I perceive this to be like a catch and release system, then these murders will, will continue unabated. At the time he assaulted his former partner, Hammond was on bail for resisting police over an unrelated incident. He was jailed for 10 months while the magistrate warned of his enormous concerns for public safety. Henry, he said, was a difficult individual to treat and manage in the community. But Henry thought that sentence was excessive, appealing here to the county court. A judge agreed, wishing Hammond good luck as he was ushered back to prison for a final night. Henry was free the next day and three weeks later, Courtney was dead. When I first asked how his appeal resulted in, in early release, the OPP dismissed it and said, oh, it was only, he was only out two weeks. Prior. And talking to you, I know that's not the, not the case. In fact, he was out on the streets months before his original sentence expired and placed on a community corrections order, something the prosecution didn't oppose. That's despite the judge conceding Hammond had an inability to control his impulse and had nowhere to live. Now, despite killing Courtney, the 28-year-old won't be jailed. And where's her voice in this? Henry Hammond claims to be so mentally unwell he can't be tried for murder, something the Office of Public Prosecutions today agreed to accept. In all of the hearing that I've just heard, her considerations and taking of her life is the furthest consideration from all of these people involved in this. The mere fact that I understand that he, he moved Courtney's body into Royal Park and then made concerted efforts to conceal the body 
there seemed to be some deliberate in, intent with that. My understanding, police said that in the interview he was quite lucid, knew what he was doing, but now he's done the psychiatric assessments um, say that he didn't know what he was doing. Today's ruling means Hammond can't be found guilty and he'll never be convicted, instead sent to a psychiatric hospital. Something that the OPP first said, and I was, I was stunned in one of the first meetings, that they said, oh, yes, he could have day trips be out in 10 years, unsupervised day trips. It's a very good question as to how it was that two weeks earlier he wasn't mentally impaired, but now is mentally impaired. Nick Pappas is Victoria's former chief magistrate. Every judge and every magistrate who sentence a fellow human being worry about the consequences of getting it wrong. No parent should have to bury their child, especially like this. She was only 25 years old, but the world at her feet. Young women in Melbourne shouldn't end up here in the cemetery. Case of Jill Ma, the killer there was brought to justice. And the circumstances of his release is something that, as a lawyer, I'm astounded on. The fact that he was released from prison early, on appeal, went straight out into the streets of Melbourne, consume ice, and then kill my daughter. Courtney will never get to have a family of her own, while Henry, a father of two, will one day get a second chance to be with his. To have this um, conclude in this way, where it's a not guilty outcome, for a killer that's provided a confession, it's very devastating for us. John says his only hope now is to reverse that decision, and that's by an intervention by the Attorney-General. We will keep you posted.